to go racing. Race car is off. Brad Perez, the Hollywood, Florida native, will have control of the field as we go green flag racing for the first time and our first race in the double header of the Stig Shoreline Drive Street Circuit Bonanza is live from Long Beach. Will they make it through turn one without any incident? Perez had to check up, and Keen oh, is just man. about got in the tiller. And Perez, I think, got some help from Corey there as they have to quickly funnel down into single file, double file in some places through the fountain section. But it's Harry Tiller that's come away with control of this field as they work their way back to Shoreline Drive into South Pine Avenue for the first time. Yeah, very narrow there through the fountain section. And for many years, the jump at CTMP was what everybody tried to hit. And today, we're going to try to avoid uh, having cars end up in the fountain as they go through six and seven, heading down into turn number eight. Here comes leader Harry Tiller on to East Seaside Way. Tiller is clear. Arrow is clear. Brad Perez has started to jump out ahead because TCB is looking to the inside of Corey Vervink to take over the fourth spot, and he will get it as they come off of Seaside Way and into the parking lot that concludes the lap here at Long Beach. Everybody, oh. there's oh trouble a little bit further back, and Brad Perez just about lost it in front of TCB too. Yeah, Brad Perez was the first one I saw. Everybody's going to get stacked up here. Blake McCandless is going to go around in the hairpin. And now this is going to be a big stack up effect. Michael P. Frisch involved. Justin Malillo backwards as well. There's the caution. Was surprised we didn't get it sooner. Lap one already. Caution comes out for an incident. Kind of just a chain reaction through the field here in turn 11. Vargas and McCandless, I think, were part of it. I couldn't tell who the third car was involved there, but three of them got together to start this on the exit of the final corner. Yeah, completely separate incident uh, from be beforehand. What we were initially reacting to was contact. Uh, Brad Perez got sideways and it stacked everybody up. Then Blake McCandless initially made contact uh, with Corey Vervink, you see there. That's through turn 10. They get it recollected get back into turn 11 and then it's this stack up Vargas kind of locks it up Blake does as well Wes Graham gets involved and it's just kind of on from there like I said a chain reaction throughout the field at that point here as they will launch off of that exit and begin to thunder down shoreline drive green flag back out Tiller and Keenan in control this is the longest straightaway on the racetrack into the heaviest braking zone and worth it is calamity oh. may strike as Keenan just about lost it there there's a little bit of banking in the middle of shoreline drive but will they make it through turn one cleanly that's always the big question on restarts here time to get in the fountain area it's going to be a tight squeeze Corey Vervinkt and Briar LaPrade make contact they're going to be okay no they're not Briar almost went through the fountain that's going to open the door for DT chain reaction through the field West Graham's around will there be a yellow I don't think so just the one car around with West Graham so West loses all the track position uh, would, would be in a good place if we put our inverts in now but as it stands, Harry, Arrow, and Brad have been able to jump away from this. An issue, I think, maybe with DT as well. Didn't see what happened to him, but he's suddenly fallen down the leaderboard as live time against scoring begins to flip through. And just a whale of a battle that you see on your screen, sir. This is seventh as it stands. Gabe Wood, Garrett Smithley, David Schildhouse, TCP going. Just everybody here, especially from Smithley on back. Absolutely. Oh, big wiggle out of the leader, Harry Tiller there. And like you said, these three have broken off. Brian LaPrade's kind of loosely hanging on right now. Just, uh, you know, on that restart, I think Brad Perez actually caught the wall in turn 11 on that hairpin just a little bit. And it was just enough as he almost spins it. Actually, as David Schildhouse goes around as well, got to watch out here. But it was just enough of a wiggle that uh, it split this field uh, pretty cleanly for first, second, third, and fourth. Everybody conga lining their way through this hairpin because there aren't really too many other options unless you find a way to get into oh! somebody. And oh, trouble there. Corey gets into Cozy, and Cozy almost blocked Gabe Wood and didn't let anybody through the hairpin, but then thought better of it. Yeah, and I'm really surprised that one wasn't a caution, to be honest with you, but there goes all that track position, and that's going to be really hard to regain at this point in the race, almost halfway. And wanted to update uh, on a few drivers throughout the field. We saw uh, up earlier on, looks like TCB's come to the pit lane with a meatball. He has some damage. 
Uh, Corey Vervinkt as well on the pit lane right now after towing. Uh, and then DT looks like he uh, has dropped out. He uh, radioed in to us and said his, uh, he thinks his GPU is having some issues. So uh, hopefully he can get that resolved and get back with us for race number two. But And yeah, you see Dale there is just stuck in the fountain, right? Yeah, Brad. Brad goes around. Dale's stuck at the fountain. I, I, I hope Dale realizes that camouflage doesn't exactly work like that. You know? I couldn't see him. I thought he fell out. I was like, <laughs> um, which has been so difficult for everybody uh, so far tonight. But you see, Harry closing in. He does that exact thing. So does Frisch in front of him as well. Tense and nervy moments there. Oh, look at Frisch. He just about sent it straight over the curve there at turn eight, which is easy to clip. You've got enough room on the inside apex there to get a little bit creative with the way you attack that. But Harry Tiller has had all kinds of pace, all kinds of speed. He and Frisch door to door. This for the fourth position on the racetrack, entering the parking lot and the hairpin to close out the lap. Got to be careful here. Harry with a great turn 11 there. That was about perfect. And he's just going to gap Frisch here and take that spot from him. Big, big mess a little bit further back here. Gabe Wood is the first car amongst this bunch. So this is six, seven, eight, ninth. We go on board now with Michael Cozy Jr. in the ninth spot. We're in their way down shoreline drive to that big breaking zone in turn one. Everybody backs it up and here comes Michael Cozy Jr. bouncing over the curbs waiting for some sort of opportunity though this is the toughest place to make a move because there's just not a lot of room through here at all. And they'll get through here nicely go through four coming up on shoreline drive and like he said just so narrow through here and winds up here a bit where you you, you could make a, some noise if you had a run but obviously cozy not in position looks like gabe wood gonna lock him up a for a little bit further ahead and that might give vargas the room he needs no vargas is gonna get loose on exit here that's gonna open the door for going big moves here down the back straight away at long beach is gabe wood is there Ryan Vargas is there. Cozy is there. You see Brian LaPrade just in the back of this bunch. Meanwhile, I can also tell you, oh, contact there. Arrow got into somebody. I couldn't tell who, but there was contact on the front straightaway. There was a lap car that got in the way. I think it was Dale Reynolds, but Keenan had to get to the back of him, and all of a sudden, Harry Tiller has managed to clear Keenan for P2. What an unfortunate turn of events for the Ottawa native. So this is the battle for the race lead, and now you can't say because Harry Tiller is here, and what kind of moves will he make if Blake decides to throw the block or two or three or four? And if Blake can hold Terry or not Terry Harry up enough, rather uh, than Terry I mean, Hiller, Keenan Terry could, Hiller, yeah, alter ego. Uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> but I mean, Keenan could get theoretically back in this battle if if Blake's able to hold him up enough. Good. Yeah, if, if you're keen and you are praying that Harry just doesn't have an easy time getting around Blake and that he gets stopped up enough, which uh, he definitely is getting held up a little bit. I don't know how much longer Blake's going to be able to keep this up, but Harry certainly has had to let it go a little bit. He dives to the inside, looks at corner entry, thought about giving Blake the bumper, then thought better of it. Meanwhile, that gap to Arrow is about 1.8 seconds as it stands. So that too worth watching. Will Harry try and set Blake up in the middle of the oh, hairpin? He'll just turn him. him. He turns him and gets right in the way oh, of Keenan, Keenan twice. Oh. oh, terrible. Oh, man. Uh, you, you'd think once would be enough for one race. And Keenan runs into somebody in the hairpin twice. And that is effectively race over, barring the unexpected. Harry Tiller just has to hit his marks here for the last two laps. From Blake McCandless, uh, the most fearless driver in core when it comes to pit strategy. Didn't work for him this time, but Tiller, then Arrow, then Michael Cozy Jr. We have started the final lap of the first race of the evening, but again, we have a doubleheader in store for you. So more racing to come when the checker flag falls on this, our opening race of the evening at the Long Beach Street Circuit. And I mean, 
absolute hairy masterclass here in this one. He's going to go down into six and seven here. He's uh, driven not a perfect race, but a very clean race, and that's uh, something that a lot of his competitors cannot say and uh, why he's accrued such a lead here. He's just been clean, and he's been consistent, and he's been very, very sharp with his marks all race long, no question about it. This has been the fastest driver in the field, and he has two more corners to secure victory. One more run through the hairpin to complete the British invasion of Long Beach as Milton Keynes as Harry Tiller goes to victory lane in the opening race of the night here for round seven of season six of CORE presented by SimRapMarket.com. The opener for the Stig Shoreline Drive Street Circuit Bonanza goes to Harry Tiller. And everybody else will cycle across the line here. Harry's doing his burnouts already. Look at this battle between Brad and Schildhouse here. Good, good battles across the entire field. As you see Brad Press and David Schildhouse fighting out. This is for the ninth spot. Schildhouse at the line, I think, is just going to be okay as they go double file as quick as they can up towards the front of this field and we are green flag racing for the second race of the double header in round number seven of season number six of core race number two of the six short line oh, drive straight circuit bonanza starts off with contact between dt and corey as they bounce off of each other right in that dog leg on shoreline drive and corey takes control of this as blake mccandless comes quick in tow as they hit the fountain they were four wide for a second. Brad Perez was able to squeeze through. He's going to get the third spot. Fly Guy's going to overshoot it now. He's going to tag Malillo. It's going to be a track blocker, and we might find ourselves under a caution here. They're wrecking everywhere. Fly Guy's up off the ground. Caution is out for the first time in race number two and only the second time tonight. Justin Malillo is pulling a mater, trying to backwards drive this thing. Wreck. Shoot, I'm the world's best backwards driver. You just watch this right here, lover boy. What are you doing? Watch out, watch out. Vader, Vader. Vader. <laughs> there ain't no need to watch where I'm going. Yeah, I mean, uh, what's the play now? I mean, we're, we're looking at the wreck for the first time here. So, uh, I mean, you and Fly Guy come together. I know Fly Guy overshot the corner, just kind of tags you. Are you, you just along for the ride at that point, hoping you don't get driven over? Yeah, I, I thought I was pretty safe. I gave him a lot of room there, and uh, I don't know. I don't know what happened there. It, uh, it, it just tightens up so much right in that, that general fountain area. So it is what it is. Well, we'll let you get your repairs and such. Uh, in incredible, incredible driving there after the caution. Uh, and hopefully we'll be talking to you a little bit later, Justin. Corey and Blake McCandless, your new front row. Then it's Robert Dorman and Brad Perez, or rather Gabe Wood and Brad Perez. As Corey did not get going on that restart, Blake McCandless is there. And Corey finds himself in the middle of a three wide sandwich between Brad Perez and Gabe Wood as they thunder back down into turn one. Brad Perez again with great moves on these restarts. He's up to second as the rest of the field tries to file on through turns one and two into the fountains. And it is a big stack up a little further back. West Graham tags the grass a little bit, but it looks like everybody's going to be okay. New leader, Blake McCandless, and he's got Brad Perez right behind him. So McCandless back out in front, but this time it's not off of pit strategy. It's off of legitimate track position. And we'll get a good look at Brad Perez, too, who I think really would love to atone for some of the mistakes he made as Blake runs wide. I think that was turn five there. But Perez will take over the race lead. Gabe Wood now looking to hunt down Brad Perez and McCandless as they all check up. And Wood oh. just smacked the fence hard. So Corey Vervink will have the opportunity to take third back. Good pass there by Vervink and good pass from Brad Perez to retake the lead, come full circle. He had the pole in uh, race number one. He locks up the brakes a little bit, and, uh, and that's going to let Blake back into the equation. Could be a battle for the lead. Let's see how they get through the hairpin. 
Also, don't look now, but David Schildhouse has just come through this field like a bandit here in the opening lap. He picked up about two or three spots off his grid. He started in 11th. He's going to end this first lap back off the restart in 5th. And I believe, save for Brad Perez, he might be the hardest charger in the field at this point. But David Schildhaus is quickly working his way towards the front of this field. Oh, Brad, Brad Perez. Perez just went around. Yep, Perez runs into trouble there in turn one and loses all kinds of track position back all the way to the 10th position. So now Blake, Blake McCandless, the leader, and that was a simple mistake. He just overshot the corner. There's nothing more to it. Just drove it too deep into turn one, stuffed it in the fence, and uh, Blake had a little bit of damage too. He didn't really have anywhere to go, but it's Blake and Corey now one and two, and David Schildhouse all of a sudden is all over the rear bumper of Corey Vervink for the runner-up spot. Vargas, you figure, would be a little bit more motivated than most, given that he is a Southern California native out of La Mirada, California. Locks it up there in the hairpin. I don't know if he got into West Graham, but they'll keep it locked down there on corner exit. We'll have a good side-by-side. -side. And just look at this. L look at this. I, I need not <laughs> yeah. say much here because they are all over each other down Shoreline Drive. Well, they're all over Corey Vervinkt right now. You saw a little bit of smoke. There was contact between Vervinkt and DT, and the hairpin sent Vervinkt around, and DT had to check up big time. And that's why both of these guys have been engulfed by this pack. Here comes Garrett Smithley. Big crossover now on Wes Graham to try to break in to the top five. Now Vervinkt's going to get in the back of Wes Graham. Two laps in a row. What if there's a three-strike penalty here because that is the second time that Corey's gotten to <laughs> yeah. someone in the fountain in as many laps. Meanwhile, uh, the front three here are well gone off this battle that you see on your screens. McCandless and Shieldhouse are home free by three plus seconds over Michael Cozy. Oh, Jr. Keenan's going to go around up the nose of Brad. Sorry to interrupt you there, James, but Keenan, I, I thought that was going to be a track blocker for a second, but they get it figured out. Keenan uh, is just not having himself a lucky night. He has the speed, and you heard it from Harry in race number one. Uh, that he's had the speed it's just not been uh, his night tonight so far with incidents and such it is open for a few of these drivers looking to see if anybody else comes in dt is in arrow is in brad is in those three get a look to stretch it a little bit long to wrap up the second race as frisch gets oh, into caution. it uh, and i yellow flag do you love this or do you hate this if you just came down? Yeah, right now? I watched this one live and it's it's not pretty. <laughs> it is uh, certainly a piece of driving here. Uh, Sends it in from uh, <laughs> from deep to try to get past Garrett. And he literally he queued up over the radio after this and just said, I'm sorry. <laughs> he, knew <laughs> just, he, he knew. Yeah, no, this is uh, where, where's Landon Upman and Dylan Wilson. This would make the windshield deep contingent pretty proud, which uh, <laughs> That 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 was that was windshield, arguably firewall, arguably engine block deep there, uh, with with no intent to particularly try and make the corner clean. They just wanted to try and make some form. But here's the onboard from Justin Melillo, who just saw them all pile in and then then decides to get in on some of the action himself. Here we <laughs> go. Green flag on lap number twelve of eighteen. How will Arrow and Brad work their way into turn one? Brad has had issues on corner entry, and he just sent it straight oh! in. And somehow, Keenan was able to regroup, and then Brad overshoots the corner, it. and there Blake gets go. turned there around. And here comes Mr. Arrow HD to the front. Yellow flag Caution. out. <laughs> Keenan just came on the radio. It's like, I have no idea what Brad was doing there. Here's the onboard from Keenan. You'll see Brad off to the right-hand side of your screen. You'll see Brad dive in, make the contact. I thought that Keenan was a goner here, and then Keenan just checked it up hard. Brad locks it up, stuffs it in the fence. Blake gets turned. All of a sudden, clear track for Arrow, and he's got the race lead. And look at everybody just pile on in here. Uh... All on 
Keenan here as we go back to Greenfly Racing. The pair of Canadians up front with DT Devin Cornelius to his outside as Brad Perez got a good jump. Going to try and find some room to the outside of Devin. This may be the only opportunity that Brad has to get this lead back as Keenan and everybody will drive it down. Look at David Schulthouse to the inside to take over second. I think he got about three cars there. Oh, and he's going to get Brad Perez in the outside wall. That was a big sin for sure. And just didn't have the room with everybody three wide like that. And then a little bit further ahead, Vervinkt almost got Gabe Wood again. Championship implications there. Schulthouse will slide back to 10th. Meanwhile, Keenan's clear by a second and a half almost. As I couldn't tell who just stepped into the fence. I think that was Blake McCandless who got the wall on the exit. So he'll lose his spot to Michael Cozy. He'll lose his spot to Garrett Smithley. Ryan Vargas all of a sudden now up into second. He's been able to drag Cozy with him. They both cleared DT. And you mentioned how important it would be to a Southern California native and Ryan Vargas to get a win here. He might have an opportunity, but Michael Cozy Jr. wants to put an end on that. As he's looking down to the inside. He'll have the preferred lane. Let's see if he gets it. This will be big for points as well when we consider that Cozy currently runs in second. Michael P. Frisch is your points leader. He is currently scored in the 15th position racing Wes Graham. So there is a big opportunity for Cozy to really spin the title fight back in his direction as Keenan is gone. 1.7 seconds at the strike, three laps to go. Cozy second, Vargas third. Those two I don't think are done fighting just yet. And it's spread out a little bit further back behind them. So we'll keep our eyes on this battle for a second as Cozy oh, gets cozy. the fence and bounces off and loses second. Vargas is there. DT tried to get there through the fountain section and couldn't get alongside Cozy. So he'll have to settle for the fourth spot still. But Cozy back to third. Vargas takes over the runner-up spot once again. You will appreciate the fact that Cozy peaked to the inside of Ryan Vargas that last lap by. The leads come down. It's 1.6 seconds, but... That would be enough. That was about six or seven tenths that they chopped off last time by. So Keenan would have to give up a significant amount more as he is just ever so slightly trying to tread through here. And as his car says, finish the fight. The Halo 3 inspired machine is not too far away from victory if he can just run one more clean lap. But Vargas is beginning to close. It's going to take a big Hail Mary here, I think, from Ryan Vargas. But again, not out of the equation. He does have Cozy breathing down his neck, though. Going to make it hard here. And again, Keenan's just been so smooth, so calm, hitting his marks, and has been just about perfect from this final restart on. One more big set of corners to go. For Keenan Cousin, who was right there in the first race, had the opportunity and then ran into two lap cars at the exit of the hairpin and it crushed his chances of winning the first race. But as Vargas pulls the big sin, this time he will not be denied. It is a hot boy night as Ottawa, Ontario's Keenan Cousin goes to victory lane in core he is finally a winner and victorious in the second race of the doubleheader for the sig shoreline drive street circuit bonanza